My goal here is to create an equation that will tie torque to angular acceleration. Uh, let's begin with Newton's second law. Newton's second law says the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. An easier way of saying F equals MA. Well, if you look at that equation, and if you solve it for A, you end up with A equals F over M. A is linear acceleration, not angular, so that doesn't help me. F is force, not torque, that doesn't help me either. Well, let's see, let's think more. I know there's a relationship between linear and angular acceleration, and that is A equals R times alpha. So if I replace A with R times alpha, at least I got the angular acceleration. I can say alpha equals F over M times R. Now I get the angular acceleration. That's good here. The bad thing is I still have force, not torque. So that's not good. What will happen if I take this fraction, multiply the top and the bottom by R? It doesn't change the value of the fraction. I'm going to end up with alpha equals F times R over M R squared. And if you remember from the past, F times R is actually torque, and M R squared is the inertia. Now I have an equation that will tie torque to angular acceleration. This is kind of more written like torque equals in inertia times acceleration or angular acceleration. That's how you see that equation written. And that's the one I was looking for to find something that will tie torque to angular acceleration. This is really Newton's second law. We know it says the net force equals mass times acceleration. Here we can say the net torque equals inertia times angular acceleration. We use this when things are spinning, going in a circle, rotating. We use this when we have linear, things moving straight line. Let's take a few examples on these and see what will happen. Torque equal inertia times alpha. Let me think of an example. I ride my bike to school in the morning. When I say bike, I'm talking about 10-speed bike or 20-speed bike these days. So a torque of 0 0.97 Newton meter is applied to a bicycle let's say a bicycle wheel here of radius 35 centimeter and mass we're talking about the wheel here of 0.5 kilogram. Now the wheel of a bicycle usually looks like a hoop, so let's put this treating the wheel as a hoop. Find its angular acceleration.
Okay, that's the question. We have a bicycle wheel. You apply a torque to it of 0.97. The wheel has a radius of 35 centimeter, a mass of 0.5. Treat it as a hoop. Find its ex angular acceleration. Well, we have torque here, and we're talking about angular acceleration. I'm leaving a space for a reason. The only equation that I know that ties these two together is torque equals inertia times the acceleration. I know what the torque is, 0.97. Inertia, I don't know. I'm looking for the acceleration. So if I know what the inertia is, I can find the acceleration. That's why I left a space here so we can find what the inertia is. If you look at the equations in the book for inertia, we're treating the, the wheel as a hoop, which means the inertia for that is m r squared. And the mass of, is what? 0 0.5 kilogram. And r is 0.35, and you square it. You will find that the inertia for the wheel is 0.06125. Now come back and put that number here. How many unknowns do you see now? Only one unknown. Alpha equals 15.8. And remember, the unit for angular acceleration is rad per second squared. Let me try another one. Uh, let me think here. Wheel of Fortune. You probably watch that show on TV. You take the wheel, you spin it. So assuming that the initial angular speed is equal to 1.22 rad per second. That's actually your W0, initial angular speed. You spin the wheel and the wheel stops. So it comes, the wheel comes to rest. That tells me my final angular speed is zero rad per second. So I know the initial, I know the final, this is what I know so far, let me box them. I know this, I know the initial. Let's see what else do we know. Let's assume the wheel traveled Point seven five of a turn. It didn't go even one full turn. What is significant of this? This actually allows me to find what delta theta is, the change in theta. Each turn, the wheel will travel two pi radian. So this is point seven five times two pi. So delta theta, the change in theta, is four point seven radian. This is what we know so far. And the question, if the wheel has a radius of 0.71 meters and a mass 
of 6.4 kilogram find the average torque looking for the torque well I know torque is force times distance but that doesn't help me here I don't know what the force is nothing mentioned about the force I also know that torque equals inertia times alpha but I don't know either one of them let's see if we can find what we're looking for maybe I can find what the inertia is maybe I can find what alpha is first well the inertia for a solid disk the wheel looks like a solid disk if you watch the show it's one half m r squared which is one half the mass of the wheel which is 6.4 and the radius 0.71 squared so the inertia of the wheel is 1.613 so I got this one I need to know what alpha is before I can tell you what the torque is I need both of these to tell you what the torque is maybe from this this and this I can find what alpha is let's look at it let's write what we know I know the initial speed is 1.22 I know the final speed is 0 angular speed I know Delta theta equals 4.7 radian and I'm looking for alpha well there's an equation that has these four things in it remember this equation zero squared equals 1.22 squared plus two times alpha times theta which is 4.7 zero equals 1.4884 plus 9.4 alpha negative 9.4 alpha equals 1.4884 which means alpha is going to be a negative value because you are slowing down now I go back to this equation now I know alpha I get inertia and I get alpha I should be able to find the torque so let's go back to equation torque equals inertia times alpha now when you push that wheel I watch the show multiple times you push it down so you're going to make the wheel spin counterclockwise I mean clockwise so which means the torque is really negative there your inertia is 1.613 alpha is negative 0.153 so the torque is going to be negative 0.255 the negative tells me it's moving clockwise that's what the negative sign tells me that the wheel of fortune is moving clockwise let me try one more question on this one torque equals inertia times alpha let's take a ceiling fan
has initial speed, it's running at 2.65 rad per second. You decide you don't want it anymore running, you shut it off. Well, once you shut it off, you're gonna wait. In this case, let's assume it took 20 seconds, T equals 20 seconds, to make it stop completely. So the final angular speed is zero. Now, the reason the fan slows down, there's nobody pushing back on it except of what? The friction. Let's assume the torque due to friction, the torque that creates the friction is equal to 0.15 Newton meter. And it really should be a negative torque because force here is negative value. And the question, can you tell me what the inertia of that is? Again, I'm leaving a space here. There's only one equation that will tie the torque and the inertia that I know. Torque is negative 0.15, because slowing it down, negative torque. We don't know what alpha is. So if I know what alpha is, I'm good. So can I find what alpha is? So what is alpha? Well, go to the equation, we have this one. Zero equals 2.65 plus alpha times 20 negative 20 alpha equals 2.65 which means alpha equals negative 0.1325 rad per second squared take the value and plug it in can we get what the inertia and notice you want to make sure both numbers are negative because your inertia has to be a positive value here. Your inertia is 1.132. If you left this as positive, you get the inertia to be negative. The inertia is due to the mass, m times r squared. You know your mass is positive, and you know r when you square it, that's positive or zero. So the inertia will never be negative. So if you didn't make this a negative number, you will have a negative inertia which does not make any sense. Inertia is like a mass. The mass is always positive or zero. It can't be negative. Same thing with inertia. Inertia will never be negative. And I think that's how all these problems are going to be. T equals I times alpha. You might have to use these equations to find alpha first or second, whatever the case is. But it's going to be between a combination of this and this, most of the homework problems. Okay, that's the end of this section. Now we'll go to the next section.